Perez. I'm a father of four beautiful girls and a beautiful wife, uh, which God had restored back into my life after he had a, did, a, did a heart transplant. <laughs> uh, you know, I was, I was sitting there. I, I, forgive me, I, had, I did not write anything down. I've been uh, fighting a, 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 you know, a, a small cough um, or whatever it is. And I said, you know what, what better than to just speak what's in my heart? Than to actually, um, because I sat there and I and I tried to write something and nothing would come out. But I, I, I believe that it, it'd be better for me to share my testimony from my own heart. Um, not to discredit anybody else's testimony. I just feel like that it, it, for me personally, that that's what works. Anyway, so I was, I was born, as the as the scripture says, I was born. My mother conceived me and. I was born into sin, and my mother conceived me in sin. Um, I grew up in a same-sex marriage home. My mother was a practicing homosexual. Um, and um, so my father also was um, into a lot of sin. He, uh, he was a drug addict. He used to um, use heroin. And he also used to uh, live a very reckless life, kind of like the patterns that I was living as well. He died of HIV at the age of when I was 10 years old. Mm. So I was left to uh, pretty much live for, you know, fend for myself. My mother was living a double life. And I was just left in the streets. To, uh, and I had to, uh, I, I bought into the lies of this world. And all that this world had to offer. Which now I know it to be temporary. And um, little did I know that um, through this whole time of living, God was, was going to use all of that that I went through to bring me to a repentant faith, a repentance onto life. Um, I, lived, I lived a very wicked life. I lied, I stealed, I cheated, I coveted, I had a murderous heart, spirit, everything, all, all the sin you could think of. And it landed me into... Um, into a place of, of despair. Um, it landed me in a place where I just wanted to seek for a temporary satisfaction and a love that was now that I know it to be only temporary. I fell into, um, into drugs. And it was a down, down world spiral from there. I started to use crack cocaine and I was um, stuck and addicted to crack cocaine for seven years. Towards the end of uh, those seven years, I was homeless. I had stolen everything from every family member I could think of. Nobody ever want, nobody wanted me in their house. I, I even stole from my own children. I, I've taken Christmas presents from, um, from under the tree to sell for drugs. I've sold pretty much everything that I could possibly get my hands on so I can go out and be selfish to my own shame. I have um, been living in, in darkness and in bondage towards the end. And I didn't, I was so stuck. I've tried so many, I, I went to rehab four times. And every time I finished rehab, um, I would say, oh, this is it, this is it. This is the last time I'm gonna use. I'm not going to go back out and use. But little did I know that I was trusting not in the Lord. I was trusting in the building. I was trusting in the program. And I never put my faith and trust in the Lord. And that was the greatest conviction that the Holy Spirit convicted me of. Of my sin was my sin of unbelief. My sin of unbelief. I remember sitting there. And I, and I asked God, and I said, God, I don't think you can take this from me. I had already been to the end. Mind you, I had been, I had been asking him a day and night. At the same time, while my lights were off, my lights were cut off in my house. I was living in an abandoned house with no water, no light. My fridge was filled with maggots. The floor was filled with piss. I had the same clothes on for months. Asking the Lord to please save me. 
I was so much, I could not stop. I tried everything that I could. I could not stop. I could not stop. It was, I was, I was being controlled. I was in bondage. I was in slavery. I was in, I was under the curse of the law. And everything, all, all the wickedness that I have, that I had committed had been, had condemned me and kept me in bondage and kept me in darkness for so many years for so many years and I remember sitting there and I asked the Lord Lord you know I'm going to be honest I don't believe that you can do this I don't believe that you can deliver me and that was the greatest conviction of my heart because he did exactly what I thought he couldn't do and he changed me and it was through the preaching of the gospel. He saved me. He forgave me of all of my sin. He set me free. And I was free from all my shame and guilt. And from the wiles of the devil or the darts that were thrown at me. I was free. Completely free. When I noticed and I realized and I... And I believed in my heart that Christ died for me. It was that great love that he showed me that I'd never experienced in my life. Never had the love of Christ. It changed me. I knew I was different. I just didn't know until I started to understand the doctrines of sanctification and regeneration. That something changed. I knew I was different. I had a new relationship with sin. One might ask, what do you mean that you had a new relationship with sin? Towards the end, uh, towards my uh, conversion, God led me into a homeless shelter. And I lived in the homeless shelter for a month. And this homeless shelter is in a spot downtown in the wilderness where there was crack cocaine in every corner, um, broken Pipes on the floor, <sighs> schizophrenic people talking all kinds of stuff, sleeping next to me, demon possessed people, I mean the wilderness. And I would walk through this wilderness led by the Holy Spirit every day and not have one desire. Mind you, I could not even have one, I could not even have $10 in my pocket without already getting a, 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 a butterflies in my stomach from, and I had to go get drugs if I didn't get the drug then I couldn't relieve my body of the of the sickness that it was at that the bondage that I was in not only that the next the very next day uh, God showed me something I, I was doing my laundry at the laundromat and out of nowhere uh, my, my drug dealer pulls up, parks right in front of me, out of all places, out of all places, out of all times. Lord, amen. You know, I, I just, I, if there's anyone out here that is not saved and does not know the Lord, I just want to say one thing. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is good. For all good things come from the Father of lights from above, right? Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians, this is my favorite passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I don't remember the actual verse, but it goes, For he who knew no sin became sin for us, so that we can be the righteousness of God in him. Not only does he forgive us of our sins, but he deposits his righteousness into our account. Unworthy, undeserving, and unmeritful. Uh, uh, completely uh, not any merit of, our, of ourselves. Does this, does this only by his great love, for he first loved us. And he could also do this for you. And it was, through his, it was through his great love for me that he died for my sin. That I, my sin was nailed upon the cross. 
that God was he, that he, that God was satisfied with crushing his son under the weight of his wrath for me. What great love is that than a person who will lay down his life for his friends? How could you possibly still dabble in your sin? Repent and turn and believe the gospel. Amen. Lewis, uh, based upon your profession of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, based upon your commitment to turn from sin and serve the Lord as a member of Cornerstone Baptist Church, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk. Amen.